Hello, and today I will be demonstrating how to use a computer power supply to power a car subwoofer, like so. Alright, so the first thing you're going to need is the sub itself. So that includes the woofer, the box, and the amp. So this subwoofer um, is designed to work with a car. So this tutorial is on how to be configuring the the sub that you normally have in your car to work in your home theater or in your producing setup. The second thing you're going to need is a power supply. So this is just a computer power supply I pulled out of an old computer. Uh, this one has the uh, the wires that you can actually detach. That's okay if you if you don't have this kind. You, if it's one with the block of wires coming out, that's totally fine. But any old power supply, believe it or not, even the really kind of shitty ones uh, do a really good job at actually driving the the sub. So once you have uh, the sub and the power supply, you're going to need a screwdriver and either some wire cutters or just a knife just to expose the wires. So part A is configuring the power supply. This is where most of the work is needed. The goal here is to expose a 12 volt positive wire, a 5 volt positive wire, and a ground wire. These voltages are what correspond to running the amp and conveniently a computer power supply outputs these perfectly. So to get your 12 volts in your ground, uh, the computer power supply conveniently outputs that through the PCIe uh, dongle. So here I have exposed a, a, a PCIe dongle and uh, these two wires, one of them is ground and one of them is 12 volts. I'll post the pinout diagram and you have to make sure you're using the, the correct version of your pinout diagram and so the top row is positive, the bottom row is ground or depending on the version you have to reference your chart. So all I've done is expose those two and I've labeled 12 volts and uh, the other one I've labeled as ground. The, now for the 5 volts, they output from one of these uh, peripheral uh, dongles. Okay, so now what's going to look at the pinout diagram. I believe it's the bottom one that will output the 5 volts. Now, as long as you have at least one ground, you don't need to do a, get a second ground off of one of these pinouts. So this dongle here contains the, the 5 volts positive, okay? So now we're just looking at the amp, and so now a standard amp that works with the car is going to be 12 volts to power the the woofer, and 5 volts to tell the amp to turn on. So you got to reference your diagram for your amp, but my Clarion amp takes 5 volts in through uh, one of these, the ground and the 12 volt power. So I've wired the corresponding wires to these areas. And from there, uh, all you got to do is now plug in uh, this to the, the power supply. Now, uh, my, my power supply, like I said before, you can actually detach these. That's not very common, so that's okay. You, and you don't have to worry about any of the other wires, okay? So the goal is just, just to expose the 12 volt and the 5 volt. Once again, looking at the pinout diagram, uh, the power supplies here, the common power supply, these are called ATX power supplies. That's just the standard computer power supply uh, specifications. Final step to configuring the power supply is what is called the paperclip trick. So as you can see here, what I've actually done is bridged two pinouts. Okay, so I'll put the diagram on the screen, but two pinouts here, it's the fourth one up for me and to ground using just a wire. Uh, I've bridged these two pinouts, okay, and the goal of that is so that when you actually flick the switch on here to turn on the power supply, it actually tells the power supply to turn on. Okay, so that's equivalent to pressing the on button on your computer. All that's doing is bridging the pinout to ground, okay? So you have to Google the paperclip trick, and you have to Google the ATX pinout diagram, and it's, and it's safe, it's straightforward. All you have to do is bridge the correct pinout to ground. Okay, so once again, that's the paperclip trick. Once you've done that, then all you have to do is turn on your power supply with the switch on the back, and then it will actually turn on. So just to give an example of the paperclip trick, I just have a wire. All right, and so I've looked it up, and it's the fourth pinout, 
and to ground, which is the fifth pin out. And I'm just bridging those pin outs together. Boom. Now, when I go to plug it in, the power supply, power supply will turn on. So now from there, I have the output running from the power supply to the amp. Okay, so now I'll turn it on. Okay, so now note that the power supply turns on because the pinouts are bridged here. Okay, and so now the light's on and uh, go to test it. Now, just so you guys can see here, the way I have it set up is uh, I'm just outputting RCA from my interface, my headphone interface. So this will control the amplitude of the sub. Boom, look at that. <clears throat> and so uh, just, you know, just to, just to say here that ever since I started doing this, it becomes clear what artists have access to a sub even though it's not perfectly balanced, it becomes clear that, okay, this guy, you know, could hear how the the transient of the, the low end is, or, you know, you can tell that they really, you know, either lucked out or they know what they're doing or they had access to something and they, they can actually hear it. So I highly suggest, even if you go and, you know, buy an old crappy sub or something, use a power, pure power supply, you know, I really think that it will improve your overall game.